got four black women right here. We're playing golf. We talked about the present of the game. Mm-hmm. But I think these four right here, we're also gonna be a part of the future of the game. Beautiful. So for us to be right here together, talking about nice. the richness of both this present and the history is special. There we go. Yeah, I like that. Should we do like a T flip for who's got honors? Or should we just go? Alexis got the honors. All right, cool. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, can, I, can y'all quiet now? I'm over the ball. <laughs> like if I'm over the ball, <laughs> then just like simmer down I'm just quiet. a little bit. Got it. Thank you. There's an intangible connection that we have with the past, you know, all these greats. Have you met yes. anyone like Renee Powell sticks out? Oh, I had the opportunity to meet her two years ago for the Women in Golf Foundation Intercollegiate. Um, a and we ended up winning the tournament and we got the Renee Powell Cup and she was there to give it to us. Oh, wow. And oh my gosh. That's so dope. Yeah, that was amazing to be able to meet her. I think the last few years, the LPGA just paying attention. Uh, to Renee Powell still being heavily invested in the world of golf and what her, how significant she's been as a symbol yeah. um, for women professional golf, specifically black women's professional golf, and fundraise for her foundation. I mean, it's saying, listen, we see you right here where you are now, still very much actively leading the golf world. Yeah. And we're gonna support you in those uh, continued endeavors. Let's go. Okay, yeah. okay, that's I love that. Black History Month. We've all descended upon St. Augustine. Why was it important for all y'all to be here? I think any opportunity to be able to play, especially with black females, and even more importantly, we have all of us that are in different areas and that are achieving different things. That was the most important piece to being here today. Mm -hmm. And so this is super rare, but it's becoming more common and that's even more special. One thing I have learned when playing with golfers that are much better than you, when they now, say it's Bradford, good. Bradford, how you gonna just stand in my girl line like that? Wait, who? It's who's? okay, it's okay. I just messing just, with Bradford. Just, just stay right there, just stay. Sh he, go, he gonna say, now. <laughs> <laughs> I was, all I was saying is, when they say it's good, pick it up. For push-ups? For push-ups? Closest to the pin? Closest to the pin. So everyone does push-ups and they don't? Closest to the pin does 20 push-ups. No. <laughs> I, I do not agree. <laughs> <laughs> Alexis, long drive is not an easy sport. It is a it is a physical undertaking. What is like the, the mental prep for that like for you? Long drive. It's given me the ability to learn how to be super present in a moment, but then also to let go of what happens because you only have three minutes to hit eight balls. But then taking what I've felt and, and have done on a long drive platform and taking that to the golf course is so different because it's quiet and I can, I'm a lot calmer in long drive and I'm a lot more hype in golf. The flag. Current HBCU student. I feel like you're making history every day. Yeah. You're also like, you're a nursing student. And for every nursing student I've ever met that plays a sport, it is a big undertaking. It's crazy because I remember another school I was looking at before coming to ANT. They literally told me, you cannot do nursing and a sport at the same time. You won't make it. And ANT was like, you can do it. We know that you can. And they've been so supportive, the golf team, athletics, and the nursing school to help me get through. And I got one more semester. Let's go. Like, Let's go. Let's go. Aggie Pride. Aggie Pride. <laughs> Furthest from the pin. Treats everybody mm. to Wild Wild. Y'all yeah, okay. make some noise in Bradford backswing real quick. <laughs> <laughs> Sadly, I think that would help. <clears throat> mm. Okay, dead silence, dead silence. No, we good to go. <laughs> All right, I'll go next. Did y'all hear that? Ooh, I'm going to change, change my <laughs> order a little bit. I want yeah. some cranberry juice. Yeah. Want... <laughs> some tea with some honey. <laughs> So you're the beneficiary of someone investing in HBCU golf. 
Does it ever occur to you like how special that is that someone invests in HBCU golf and, and do you think that that's important for, for other programs, not just Howard? Every day when I wake up and go to the golf course, I feel so proud of myself for having come so far, but also proud of the people around me who have invested in my future in order for me to get my education and the golf I've always aspired to play in college. I'm really thankful for those around me, especially Coach Perrier, um, Coach L, Steph Curry, Phil Mickelson, who also is a beneficiary for us. But I really love the game, and this has really allowed my love of the game to grow. So I don't feel burdened by having to push myself. I have others to help me grow. Yeah, that's it. Nice. Go in. Go in. Go in. Oh, oh, wait, really? you should try and go on the LPGA. <laughs> Last year, you were able to talk to like youth golfers at the Renee event, Cowell, yes. and I think like speaking opportunities like that are really cool for pros to like, you know, like reach out and touch the community, yeah. touch up, you know, to center it around youth golf in Atlanta, um, and all the little black kids that came out to that event, and to be able to speak to them, to show them generation, the, the leading generation with Renee, me still right here and their faces coming up and also learning to love the game of golf was just really special. The series right here is about past, present, and future. And that's exactly what that moment right. was. And um, it was just incredible to be a part of. Why am I playing? Is it just to hoist a trophy? Um, if that's the case, then I'm gonna be miserable regardless. And yeah. for me, like why is like service. Like I just started a foundation. It's called the Belt and Drive Foundation, and so I'm traveling next year in a van. Okay. And so it's gonna have a roof deck to hit balls off of, like kind of swooping it up really nicely, but to literally bring the country club to people, right? The goal is to go to uh, like junior highs and bring, you know, putting mats there. Just to, for kids to see golf, and hopefully that helps them to get into something, but more importantly, teach the characteristics of golf. Mm -hmm. Say like, this is life. Um, and then also give opportunities because it's opened my eyes to so much. In three, two, one, hit. Dang, wow. <laughs> <laughs> oh, All right. Oh, that's the close one. <laughs> <laughs> Talk to me a little bit about your education. I am a biology major with minors in computer science and chemistry. I also do side research into nano-enabled immunotherapy, as well as Arnold Chiari type 2 malformation. I know some of uh, these words. <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, I'm going to be a neurosurgeon at the age of 32. I'm also getting my PhD MD after I graduate early from college. A, and, and that is incredible. Like, that's a huge <laughs> undertaking. Come on, come on, come on, Pat. Thank you. When you look around, you know, you're playing with Alexis Belton, Kristen Carr, Mariah Stackhouse. Yeah. How cool is that? It's is that practically a dream come true, honestly. Brad's been my idol since I was like nine years old. <laughs> so riding a golf cart with her, conversing with her, like we're just two old friends, is fantastic. It's really cool. Are you like, are you taking notes? I'm about to, yeah, I'm about to say, I'm about to start taking notes. Yeah. <laughs> Make a little Google Doc and keep it awesome. Yes. <laughs> I say, don't waste time outside of team practice. Like spending hours out there, it's not, it's not productive while you're in school. So set two hours aside and be like, I'm gonna do X, Y, Z drill. And as soon as I'm done with them, I'm leaving. Like just keep that a focus, focus effort. But then also like have fun. Like when I think back on school, like my game definitely got better. I grew, but I have the best memories, equally as great memories off the course as I had on the course. And so I think that created an experience that allowed me to really love college golf. I see so many young golfers like trying to get to the LPGA level, right? But bypass all those great little moments, all those little successes that they have to kind of really, really relish in that and just like be like, man, this is awesome, right? Um, and so I would say like, first figure out your why, why you're doing this. Is, is it for anyone else besides you and, and what's your purpose? And then two, like enjoy every moment. Make sure it's fun. I'm not by myself out there. We've got each other, right? We got the chat and we know how much we love to support each other on all our journeys. So even in those moments where it's like, all right, you know, it's just me out here. I know my girls are supporting me. I know my guys are supporting me too, Brad. Always, always. You As we say, is. Four hundred. Four hundred. Four hundred. <laughs> 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 <laughs>